I like to help people. One of the reasons why I do what I do is to relieve anxiety and stress. When I see someone experiencing a high level of anxiety or stress, and I have the ability to relay some information that I have gathered throughout my life in a concise and actionable way that will help remove that stress, I really love that. It's <laughs> very fulfilling for me. I am gonna share with you some of these questions that come up who are confused by our healthcare system. Our healthcare system in the United States and in other countries as well is very confusing. If you are not familiar with some of the terms and guidelines and recent legislation or old legislation, it can be extremely frustrating and confusing. It is not an intuitive business. Health insurance is not intuitive. Our healthcare system is not intuitive. I'm not pretending that I know how to fix it. It is very complicated. I have helped thousands of people, so I do have some experience. Everything I say today is not medical advice. It is not legal advice. I am speaking from my own experience and what I have seen work and what I have done in the real world to resolve some of these common issues. This person said that they had recently finished a job or an internship and their insurance ends on the end of this month. It is currently uh, August 29th. On September 1st, this person is going to be without insurance. And they went on to the exchange through healthcare.gov, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. It's showing that her start date is October 1st. Is this normal? Perhaps when she filled everything out, she might have put that her coverage end date was September 1st. It might be something that she entered in on her end when she was on the website applying for health coverage because the fact that it's starting October 1st is strange. When you lose coverage, you have what's called a qualifying event. Most of the time, regardless of how it happens, whether you lose coverage through a spouse, you lost your job, you changed jobs, any kind of loss of coverage is going to be a qualifying event for you to go on to the exchange or get an individual plan or enroll on your spouse's. Maybe your spouse has an insurance plan and it's not their open enrollment right now. That is a qualifying event for you to go on to their plan in the middle of the plan year. This person has had a qualifying event. So because their coverage is ending August 31st, this person's start date should be September 1st. This person asks, do I need to contact healthcare.gov or the new insurance company? And my response, and she asks, is this, he asks, I don't know if this is a he or she, I keep saying she, but I could be totally wrong. This person says, is this normal for coverage to start 10-1 when my coverage is ending October 30, uh, August 31st? I said, no, this is not normal. You should not have a gap in coverage. You should be eligible to enroll 9-1 because of a loss of coverage, which is a qualifying event. Please obtain a HIPAA letter from your prior insurance company and forward it to your broker or your new insurance company or good luck with healthcare.gov. Hopefully this person did get a broker. I'm not saying this just because I am a broker. I'm saying this because brokers are, are invaluable when you're dealing with health insurance. Not having a broker in insurance is similar to not having a real estate agent when buying a piece of property. <laughs> Going through the system, you're trying to buy a house, what do you do? You contact a real estate agent. Same should go for insurance. You should always reach out to a broker. They have more knowledge than you in regards to all the insurance companies, all of the rules like this qualifying event rule, the HIPAA letter, what's required to get onto a plan in the middle of a plan year. Having a broker will help you have an advocate in these processes when, you, when these things happen, when corrections need to be made.
And I continue by saying a HIPAA letter will include your coverage start and end dates and will come from your prior insurance company. So when you cancel coverage with an insurance company, by law, they have to send you a HIPAA letter, which includes your start and end date with that carrier. So you take that letter, you probably will receive it in the mail. It's usually an unmarked, simple envelope, and many people mistakenly toss it. So you may have to contact your prior carrier and ask them to email it or fax it to you or mail out another copy. I've had many people that I've talked to lose their HIPAA letters or state they didn't receive it. And sometimes people have been with an insurance company for so long, sometimes the, in, or they just moved or the incorrect address is in the insurance company system. So the insurance company sends it to the wrong address. There's a million reasons why you may not be receiving your HIPAA letter. You can always call your prior insurance insurance carrier and request it, verify your address with them, make sure that there's no typos in your address and get another one sent out to you. And as soon as you provide that HIPAA letter to your new insurance company, they will backdate coverage. As long as you do it within a 60 day period, most carriers want to make sure they're making changes within a 60 day period. Most will require an exception if you're going back more than 60 days. But as long as you're within that 60 day window, which this person is, then you should be just fine. And as soon as they submit this HIPAA letter to the new insurance carrier, they should backdate the coverage so that there is no gap in coverage. You do not want that gap in coverage. One more thing, if you're a client, thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate all the testimonials that have been rolling in. Also, if you're not a client, I have a link down below for an application a questionnaire. Once completed, we can hop on the phone together, probably about a 30 minute phone call to see if I can help you. Again, I appreciate you hanging out until the end and I'll see you next time.